we've covered quite a bit of ground in this uh, chapter. We've been talking about frequency domain representation of discrete time signals. We learned about the discrete time Fourier series. The discrete time Fourier series is what we use to represent periodic discrete time signals in the frequency domain width. We also learned about the DTFT, the discrete time Fourier transform, and this is what we use to represent aperiodic discrete time signals with in the frequency domain. These representations are similar in the fact that both of them use a weighted sum of complex exponentials. So in both of these transforms, what we're really trying to do is write our discrete time signal as a linear combination of complex exponentials where each complex exponential has a different frequency. The discrete time Fourier series, to do this, when you're dealing with periodic signals, those signals have a period of n naught, and we only need n naught complex exponentials. So when we write out the DTFS, it actually has a finite length. There's only n naught terms in that representation. The DTFT is a little bit different. It actually needs an infinite collection of complex exponentials. This DTFT representation is a continuous function of the frequency omega. We need all values of omega, and this function that we get, the DTFT, is actually 2 pi periodic. So if we've computed x of capital omega, we know what x of capital omega plus 2 pi is because it's a 2 pi periodic function. And typically we just plot that function over the fundamental frequency range from minus pi to pi. We can write the input and output relationship of a discrete time LTI system in the frequency domain very nicely like this. We know that the input and output in time are related via convolution. A convolution in frequency is in the frequency domain is multiplication. So we have this very nice input-output relationship when working in the frequency domain. This quantity h of omega is what we call the frequency response of the system. It's typically complex, so we have to plot this complex quantity two different ways. The way we typically do this is by taking the magnitude. The magnitude of the frequency response is what we call the system amplitude response. We also take the angle of this complex quantity, and that's what we call the phase response. So by plotting the amplitude and phase response of the system, we know how our system is going to change each frequency component coming into the system. We talked about the DTFT, and it has many useful properties, very similar to the properties of the Fourier transform. So if you're familiar with Fourier transform properties, you basically know all the nice DTFT properties. The DTFT provides a continuous function of omega. Sometimes we just want samples of that function, and that's what we call the DFT, the discrete Fourier transform. The discrete Fourier transform gives us samples of these underlying continuous valued functions. If we're trying to get samples of f of omega, or whether we're trying to get samples of the continuous time Fourier transform f of little omega. So if we want discretized versions of these signals, the DFT is what we use to get those samples. So you can almost think of the DFT as a way of sampling these continuous functions. And then finally we ended this uh, section by talking about a specific way of computing the DFT. This specific implementation is what we call the fast Fourier transform. It's a specific implementation of the DFT and it is a way of breaking a signal down into pieces and by doing that and being smart about how you keep track of your multiplications you can actually reduce the number of computations from n squared to n log n and when you're dealing with very long signals that computation savings can be very significant. We can also use the FFT to do linear convolution. We talked about how to go into the frequency domain, how to do padding in time first, then go into the frequency domain and do that computation in a very efficient way. And this is almost always how you do filtering. You very seldom do filtering in the time domain. You almost always go into the frequency domain, do your multiplication, and then go back to the time domain via an inverse FFT. So we've talked about lots of good stuff in this chapter. DTFS, DTFT, DFT, and FFT. Those are all very new and important concepts. Keeping them all straight and organized in your mind is difficult, 
but uh, as you practice homework problems and things like that, the differences between them should become more clear and uh, you'll get better at using them as you go forward.